Section 3.1, Chemical Equations. So this chapter is on stoichiometry, and stoichiometry is a very funny word that has to do with amounts. So if you know what you start with, and you know what the amounts that you start with, you can find out the amounts that you have at the end. On the right is a picture of a very handsome Frenchman that lost his head during the French Revolution. His name was Anton Lavoisier, and he was a scientist. He was absolutely amazingly detailed, and he was the first of the chemists. In fact, I would imagine that anything before him would not actually be called chemistry. It would still be called alchemy. Even, even um, Isaac Newton, which is about the same time as this guy, wrote books on alchemy. So it was just kind of a mixture of kind of hocus pocus and, and knowing some stuff and magic and all kinds of stuff all mixed up together. Kind of nuts. But this guy really treated it as a science. And he was the first to have this idea that if you don't let anything exist or anything go away or, or escape, then whatever you start with can turn into something new and then you can make it go back to what you started with. And that was, that was revolutionary uh, at the time. Nobody had that conception. And so, um, very famous quote here, we may lay it down as an incontestable axiom that in all the operations of art and nature, nothing is created. An equal amount of matter exists both before and after the experiment. Upon this principle, the whole art of performing chemical experiments depends. Um, this went further. This is an accepted um, law of thermodynamics that nothing is created, no energy, no matter is created nor destroyed. Everything that, that existed at creation is exactly the same that we have now. All energy derives itself from the energy of creation and all matter is, was created. Um, but what you can see in chemistry and what's so neat about chemistry, it's talking about interconversions between matter, that matter can change forms, but still stay exactly the same in terms of amounts. So a chemical equation is simply, you see the word equation like, like a math equation, where you have an equal sign, you have reactants on the left and products on the right, and they are equal in matter. So if you were to count up the atoms of, say, on the left, you have you have hydrogen, that's a hydrogen molecule, so this is one H2 molecule with two hydrogens in it, and there's two H2 molecules, and one O2 molecule, so this is an oxygen and oxygen, so this is one molecule, and this is one molecule, and one mo molecule, three molecules, one, two, three, all of these molecules break apart, so it's almost like Legos, they all break apart. And then here's your equal sign. This is called yields. It's an arrow. Forward towards the products. You produce, that's what products means, you produce something new. So the old breaks apart and the new reforms. And so two of these will form with one of these. Two of these will form with one of these. And you end up with two water molecules. So a balanced equation is when it's not just one H and one O yields two H2Os, but you look and say, do I have the same amount of hydrogen on both sides? Because I can't lose any, so I, whatever I start with is what I still have at the end, uh, but they end up with two of the products. This is called a coefficient, and this is called a subscript. So the subscript is telling you how many atoms you have in a molecule, and then the coefficient tells you how many molecules that you have. All right, so here is a chemical equation. This is methane gas, CH4, one carbon and four hydrogens, and two molecules of oxygen. So oxygen is a diatomic, remember, two, two atom molecule, oxygen is. So it's two of those, and they will completely break apart. The carbon att attaches to two of the, the oxygens, and then the other oxygens attached to the four hydrogens. And you end up with one carbon dioxide molecule and two water molecules. 
and this is called a combustion reaction. You're burning methane. So fire is simply a reaction with oxygen in the air. So when there's no oxygen in the air, there is no fire. So the reactants on the left, so all those are reactants, CH4 and oxygen on the left. Reactant, uh, the products are on the right. The CO2 and the H2O are on the right. And so the states of matter are given there beside to tell you what is the state of methane. Methane is a gas. What is the state of oxygen? Oxygen is a gas. And so is carbon dioxide. And in this, uh, the explosion that happens after this burns, the water vapor is gas also. Coefficients tell you how many molecules are required uh, in order for all the atoms to be the same on both sides. So instead of just oxygen O2, if I'm going to need two oxygens just for the carbon dioxide plus two oxygens for the two water molecules, then I must need two molecules of oxygen. So in, I can't bother the subscript because O2 means oxygen molecule. I can only add a coefficient which says I have two of these molecules. That's what a coefficient is. So the subscripts tell the number of atoms in each molecule. So here's H2O. This is telling you that you have two hydrogen uh, atoms attached to this molecule. And the, the coefficient tells you that you have two molecules. So there's two hydrogens in each molecule, one, two, one, two, and there's two molecules. So when you add up hydrogens at the end, you know that there must be four. Two times two is, but then the oxygens would be two, one in each, two of the molecules. So I must have two oxygen molecules. So reactants on the left, products on the right. So when you want to balance a chemical equation, you are, you are responding to the fact that you can't make anything. No, no matter pops into existence and no matter pops out of existence. So you have to have the same amount on both sides. So the arrow kind of is like the equal sign. And then the left side is the reactants. The right side is the products. So if you were to have something like sodium plus chlorine uh, chloride yield sodium chloride, you have to make sure that you have the same amount on both sides. So in this case, I've got two sodiums, two chlorines, and then two molecules with one sodium and one chlorine in each. So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this is a balanced equation. So in this case, I've got mercury nitrate, which is aqueous. Aqueous means it's dissolved in water. It's all broken apart in water. I have potassium iodide, it's aqueous. Uh, when they break apart and reform into mercury iodide, so the mercury has broken apart with the nitrate and joined up with the iodide, and then potassium, the potassium is broken off with the iodide and joined with the nitrate. So they've, they've switched places, they've switched partners. So on the left side, I've got one mercury and one mercury on the right side. Um, I personally would see this as a nitrate and not break it apart into nitrogens and oxygens, but just see it as a nitrate and see that's two nitrates on the left, okay, one nitrate on the right. That means I need to multiply this by two to give you two nitrates because I have two nitrates on this side. My mercuries are already balanced. On the, this side, I have an I. On this side, I have I2, so I have two iodines. I'm going to have to have two iodides on this side, so I multiply this by two. And then I check. That's now two potassiums, and I do have two potassiums. So balancing kind of goes back and forth between the two. Uh, make, multiplying coefficients is all you can do. You can't do anything with the subscripts. You can only uh, play with the coefficients to make sure that there's the same on both sides. So number one, here's the steps for balancing an equation. Write the unbalanced equation using correct chemical formula for each reactant product. So they're going to balance water here. Hydrogen, gas. And remember, hydrogen is diatomic, so it's H2. Oxygen is diatomic. There were seven of these that you need to know. 
Oxygen is diatomic. It's a gas also. Yields, that's the equal sign in your mind. Water, and it's liquid water. Now, in the real reaction, when you combust this, it's an explosion, and this would be in gas, and then the gas would cool to make water. It really just makes water vapor. Number two, find suitable coefficients, which are numbers you multiply the whole molecule by, to indicate how many of these are required to balance the equation. So if I were balancing this on the top, I would say that I've got two hydrogens on the left, two hydrogens on the right, so that's fine, but I have two oxygens on the left and only one oxygen on the right, that's not fine, so I need to multiply the right by two so that I can have two oxygens. Now when I look, I've got two oxygens on the right, two oxygens on the left, so that's okay, but I've messed up my hydrogens. I now have two times two, which is four, four hydrogens, but I only have two on the left, so I'm gonna have to multiply the whole molecule by two in order to do that. So that's what they're saying. You're looking for suitable coefficients in order to make all the, the atoms be the same on both sides. Number three, you reduce the coefficients to their smallest whole number value. Um, as you work ahead, there's often times that you will have something like this. You will have played back and forth and back and forth and changed it and realized you have four and two and four. Well, if every single coefficient is divisible by two, this first one cannot be correct because they're always going to be in the smallest, lowest whole number ratios that there, are, that there can be. So if 4, 2, and 4 are all divisible by 2, divide by 2, you'll end up with 2, 1, and 2. And that would be the correct, the correct one. The last one, you check your answer by making sure both of the numbers of the, and kinds are both on the same. So you make sure you have the atoms, the same types of atoms, and the same number of each type of atom on the left and the right side. And that's a balanced equation.